right, so we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video, and that is doing a little bit more tweaking on this mouth socket right here where it intersects with the head layer. So I'll zoom in, and with the grow brush, I'm going to select a sharp brush alpha here. Right click and drag up to increase the intensity. And I'm going to hold the control key down to invert. So that looks about right. I'll hide the head layer and hold the shift key and do a little bit of smoothing. So now we're ready. Let's unghost the head layer and I'm going to switch from voxel mode to surface mode. I could right click on the mouth cavity layer and choose subtract from head layer. But in this case, I'm going to come over to the right hand side hold the control key and just drag it right on top of the head layer and just release. Okay. So I go inside the mouth cavity area here. Looks like I did a fairly good job. So the next thing I want to do is retopologize the mouth sock. One way I might approach it is to hide half the head and retopologize one side and then I can copy that mesh over. So let's try that. I'm going to hit the 5 key on my number pad to go to an orthographic view and then 2 on the number pad for a front view. Zoom in and in surface mode I choose the surface hide tool. By default it's going to have a rectangular marquee selection. You want to make sure your ignore back faces is unchecked if you want to go all the way through. In this case that's what we want. And you also want to make sure depth limit is not checked because if you do whatever limit you have here it's only going to hide a certain percentage of the way in. That's not what we want in this case. So um, I also want to make sure that I don't have symmetry turned on because if I'm trying to hide just half the head, well, 3D Coat is going to duplicate that on the opposite side as well, so I need to uncheck that. Okay. And I'll come out of orthographic view. Now one thing I may want to do is build this area up a little bit. Let me use the, let's try the draw brush. I'm just going to lightly build this area up here. I'll finish this up and uh, when we're ready to read apologize I'll come right back. Okay, I finished the other side of the mouth and we're ready to look at retopologizing the mouth sock. So what I'll do is hide one side of the face here. I'm going to an orthographic view, hitting the 5 key on the number pad, then number 2 for a front view. Choose the surface hide tool. I'm going to check my symmetry and turn it off because I only want to hide one side. and. Make sure ignore back faces is unchecked. I'll drag select. Hit the 5 key to come out of orthographic view. We'll go for the retopo room. And I typically like using the strokes tool whenever I can. And I'm going to start from the corner of the lip to kind of establish some boundaries here. So for a little bit more precision, I tend to hold the control key and click to just to create the points where I need them. Because uh, I find if I had to brush select, it's convenient a lot of times, but 
my hand's not so steady and I'm creating a lot of extra work for me to have to clean this back up later on. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to speed up the playback for a few moments in order to keep this video as concise as possible. So I'll hold the control key. Take it around, hold the control key again, and click on the last point to resume. I think that's fine. Okay, so now all I have to do is hit the enter key. And for the most part, it did a pretty good job. Now let's go ahead and use the split rings tool to add some additional loops. So I'll add one on the bottom there, one on the top. I'm going to leave it open for now on each end, or obviously I'm going to leave it open here, but on this end I'll leave it open until I complete the other side. Let me relax some of these loops here uh, quickly. So select loop, and then choose relax. Same thing, choose loop, control D, select that edge. You have a hot key for that loop. And again, relax. Control D. Now what I need to do is just copy this over. I hit the S key to bring up the symmetry panel. Hit enable symmetry. Choose the appropriate axis. And also show symmetry plane. Might adjust my mirror snapping up quite a bit. You'll find that if you don't have any value here on mirror snapping, if it's at zero, a lot of times when you're working with symmetry, you're going to have a lot of extra vertices to have to weld down the center line if you don't do that because 3D Coat is going to do all the welding for you if you'll allow it to, and that's what your mirror snapping is for. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose Sim Copy. What I'll do now is go back to the sculpt room, choose unhide all, go back to the retopo room, and I could use the, the move vertices tool or the brush to move these individual vertices toward the center. Let's choose vertices. When you see that little red dot, 3D Coat is telling you it's going to weld it as soon as you let up. Okay. 
can turn the opacity down so we can see through the mesh a little bit. So I think one last thing is to turn the symmetry plane off and we'll cap this end here. Before I do that though, I want to reduce my brush size down and choose edges. I have a hotkey for that edge loop and I'll choose relax. Actually I may hold the shift key and select all three of these, edge loop and then relax. You can see the one on the end tends to scale in, and that's what I want. And then now I can use the cap tool and finish it off right there. So you could continue tweaking it uh, to your liking, but that's how you might best handle creating a mouse sock in 3D Coat. Hope that helps, and thank you for watching.